Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. I like how that Karen has places to be, but still has time to get out her car and have her little fit. Glad the cops are there to serve her with her karma. Hope they wrote her up for all they could. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Angry Karen gets instant karma. I live in the glorious hellhole of Los Angeles, California. Drivers here are crap. Karens are born here, I'm pretty sure. I was in Koreatown getting some bomb snacks and some other stuff. The area I was in was three lanes wide, one oncoming lane, one center turn lane for the massive amount of areas to turn into, and one ongoing lane. I was attempting to turn left into the shopping mall when one woman didn't want to wait for traffic and tried going in the turn lane to pass. I was in the turn lane already and had my blinker on. The woman was cussing at me, honking her horn at me, and flipping me off. You know, usual Karen road rage. She starts pulling closer and closer to me to where there was centimeters of space between our front bumpers. This absolute screwball then puts her car in park and gets out to start screaming at me about how she has places to be and I need to get out of the way. Luck would have it, LAPD was a few cars back at this point, since the traffic started going again, and saw this. He pulled up behind her and lit her up. She was screaming and yelling about how I hit her. He looked at how calm I was and saw no damages, and a few other drivers chimed in saying how crazy she was. She even started yelling at the cop, calling him a racist, though all three of us were white. She yells some more, gets back in her car, cop helps me back up and get through. Last I saw was her getting written up. F you, Karen. I got my snacks. Glad you came through unscathed. That could have ended differently. And our second story. So you got our boss to force us to try your terrible idea? Fine, we'll try it. A few years ago, I worked in manufacturing for a small architectural firm specializing in ACM fascia cladding. ACM, for those who don't know, stands for Aluminum Composite Material and is pretty much a wafer of polyethylene plastic laminated on either side by a thin layer of aluminum. It's sturdy, decorative, and easy to work with, but also extremely heavy. They come in long sheets, usually 16 by 5, and arrive on long pallets or skids. After the sheets are processed into the needed shapes, they're stacked flat on top of each other on the same skids that they came in on, and then stacked and strapped down to flatbed trailers to be shipped out. Well, some eight months or so into my stay there, they hired someone new to work on panel design and cut sheets. He was hired to replace the previous person after they outright quit because of some unrelated poor choices by upper management. We'll call him Tryhard, T-H. Regardless, instead of promoting from within, they hired this guy. He was nice, at first. Obvious low self-esteem, yet very arrogant. He was the typical ideas guy you'd find in a lot of places. Now, this wouldn't be an issue normally, except his ideas sucked. And he wasn't even very good at his own job. The amount of recuts we had to do because of his ineptitude cost easily thousands of dollars a quarter. Those sheets aren't cheap, but he'd routinely come out to the shop for a smoke break and wander towards either the welders or the CNC router where I was, and he'd give tips. He had zero experience in CNC machining or welding or manufacturing at all, mind you, so his ideas were bad for any number of reasons, and we kept telling him the things he was bringing up have already been tried. And there's a reason we do the things the way we do. After being shot down or making it obvious, I want him away from my router. He usually puts out his cigarette on the shop floor and shuffles back inside to go screw up some more cut sheets. One day, though, he came out with a brilliant, terrible, idea for a totally redesigned way to ship the panels after they're cut. TH. Instead of shipping them laying flat, we should ship them standing upright. Now, I see the logic in this. If they're upright, then it's easier for the field crew to pull panels off and organize them how they want them. It's tedious and difficult to sift through the skids how they are. He had a design and everything. It could work. However, there were a plethora of reasons why this had never been done in the past, and I laid them out for him as nicely as possible. His design effectively amounted to a regular 16-foot skid with a 5-foot wall down the middle running the whole length made from 2x4s. Me. Okay, it's a solid design, but here's where it gets tricky. 
What you're asking is for us to custom build a wall onto an existing skid. We get these skids for free from the manufacturer, but adding lumber gets expensive really fast. Furthermore, there aren't any supports for that wall. If we stack 500 pounds of panels against that wall, it's going to snap at the base. Even if it doesn't snap the wall off, those panels will flex against the open air under them. We can add a sloped wall, but then it's even more expensive and harder to build. On top of that, this design makes it difficult to ship. We can't stack anything on top, we can't put as much under it, and the wide profile on the front will increase the drag and cause the panels to oscillate in the wind, which could damage them further. We can add a windshield to protect the panels, but that again increases the cost and complexity. Now, assuming we did all this anyway and worked out the issues with shipping it, I have no doubt that it would indeed make life easier for the guys in the field. One final issue though, they never bring the skids back. They throw them away on site. We'd have to build this custom skid every single time for each shipment. We went back and forth for about 15 minutes with me holding firm that myself and my partner on the router were not about to stop doing our jobs for three hours while we prototyped a crappy skid design and waste hundreds of dollars in wood and man hours for some harebrained idea. Getting increasingly flustered, eventually he gave up and yelled something about how all we do is crap on his ideas and he just wants to help. Time passes and he returns to the shop with our boss in tow. Boss asks if we can just give it a shot. Okay, fine. So my partner pulls me to the side and pretty much tells me he's going to half butt it because he doesn't want to waste this much time on it. Fair enough. But I give a counter idea. If we want TH to stop doing this, we need to embarrass him. If we half as it is, then he'll blame us the moment it fails. So let's do this. Put 120% into it, give suggestions to improve it, pick the best skid we have and put a couple of extra screws into every joint, make it the best executed terrible design we possibly can. So we got to work. Picked the sturdiest skid we had and we made it beautiful. It took hours. $500 worth of labor, nails, liquid nails, industrial wood glue, and seven total man hours. So over $650 when done. I'll admit it was impressive when it was finished. We stacked the panels on it, banded it best we could, and it took an additional hour to load the skid wall onto the truck because the forklift driver couldn't see past the skid wall where usually he can just see over it since they're usually only 16 inches tall. I made sure to give plenty of help loading it, and we eventually succeeded in strapping it down, and off it went onto its 16-hour truck ride to wherever. Well, truck was late at the site because the driver kept stopping to figure out the odd noise. Several of these smaller panels had slid out and fallen off the truck because we couldn't band it as reliably since everything was sitting upright at a 60-degree angle. It was indeed easier for the field crew to work with once it was at the site, but some of the panel edges had been damaged from resting on the edge of it for 16 hours. At the end, as I knew they would, the crew destroyed the skid and threw it away because it had cost way more to ship it back to the shop. When Boss relayed the report to us, I saw TH wandering out towards us, and I made eye contact and loudly asked when he was within earshot, me. So, $650 for a disposable skid? Was it worth it? Boss, not in the slightest. We're never building that again. And I just stared at TH and nodded my head. Me. Roger that. Never again. TH veered off quick and smoked somewhere else, waiting until Boss went inside before finishing. He made a point to avoid going to the router when I was there after that. And our last story. I finally stick it to my neighbor for stealing my property. My neighbor removed my fence without my permission and put in a new one between our properties, except he put it two feet over the property line onto my property. I've been working with the county for like the last eight months to get it rectified. Luckily, he never got a permit and got caught lying to them that the fence was always there. Guess he didn't know they take satellite pictures every year of the yards to easily verify this type of stuff. Why is he a jerk? Took grass killer to my lawn, removed my fence without permission, put up a fence on my property, let 30 yard bags worth of leaves fall onto his yard, then waited weeks until they all eventually migrated to mine so that I would pick them all up, introduced him to my wife and then immediately called her the wrong name, Margaret to Mag sort of thing, random name for anonymity, asked me if I have any projects coming up, 
I told him, I'm going to replace my driveway with concrete. His response, you can't afford that. We're also planning on putting in a new fence. This is before all this fence madness began. His response, that's what the last owner said. Tomorrow, he'll finally get the official notice of the violation and the surprise that he'll have to pay to move the fence. The fines for not getting a permit and the fines for ignoring past notices. He is beyond a jerk, so it just feels great to know that karma has caught up to this adult bully. Update. Purchased and installed three wireless cameras. They got issued the You're Screwed notice. After they saw that glorious notice on their door, they immediately came over like some PO'd hornets. They were yelling at me about how I effing called the county and how they spent so much money on the fence. They also raged about how they removed my POS fence for free, blah blah blah. Fence removal was part of their fence installation cost. They were trying to act like they were doing me a huge favor. Long story short, after they ranted and lost their crap for a bit, I just told them it's out of my hands and that they have to deal with the county and that I did not force them to put up a fence without my permission on my property and without a permit. Told them to take some accountability and to please get off my property. I'm sure they're plotting to get me somehow, but for now it sure does feel good to pull the carpet out from under them. Congrats on the outcome, OP. I'm sure you'll welcome the relief of fighting this issue. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.